To make it easier to follow along with the lesson, please reset your user setting or make sure the mouse preset is on three button or regular mouse. If you do not know how to change the settings, please watch our UI video first. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover some tips and tricks for thread fabric through OBJ Mesh. To ensure best collision result, the mesh imported need to be fairly dense. To view the typology, change the avatar display to Mesh. If the poly count is too low, you can use our smooth feature and increase the division level in the property editor. In my case, the mesh is dense enough, so I won't apply any smoothing. For the strap pattern, I'm using the nylon canvas fabric preset with a custom substance texture assigned to it. In real life, this kind of fabric bends uniformly across the grain. A trick to mimic this bending in model designer is to change its typology. For best visualization, I'll change the fabric display to mesh. Select both patterns, right click in the 3D window and click remeshing. The typology became uniform quads after remeshing. Since I'm working in a smaller scale, I'll decrease the particle distance to 3. If I put the strap close to the buckle and simulate, there are many collision errors and the simulation is very unstable. It is because both avatar and the fabric has collision offset by default. In most scenarios, these offsets help you get a more stable collision result. But since we are threading a small piece of fabric through a small hole, a 3mm offset is too far in this case. To change the skin offset, click on the avatar and go to the property editor. For now, I'll change the skin offset to 1mm. Each pattern piece also have a collision offset. In the property editor, I'll decrease the edge thickness, collision, also to 1. I will also temporarily turn off gravity for easier adjustment. To do so, right-click on an empty space in the 3D window, click on Simulation Properties, change the gravity scale to 0. Simulate again, and you can see that we can put the cloth closer to the buckle without collision error. To make it easier to thread the fabric through the buckle, I want to temporarily make the strap thinner. The best way to do so is to use the shrinkage feature. Shrinkage allows you to shrink or stretch 3D pattern horizontally or vertically without changing it in the 2D pattern window. Shrinkage weft adjusts the shrinkage horizontally against the fabric grain. And shrinkage warp adjusts the shrinkage vertically. To view the fabric grain direction, click on the Edit Texture tool in the 2D window. The arrow indicates the grain direction. You can change the grain direction by rotating it. But in my case, I want it to be parallel from the edge. I'll decrease the shrinkage weft to 80% and simulate. The fabric in the 3D window shrinks horizontally. I want to paint the top of the fabric to make it stay in place. Switch to the Paint Box tool and double-click on the internal line to create a row of paints across the line. In the 3D window, click on the fabric to create a reference point. Switch to Select Mesh Box tool Drag a box near the reference point in the 2D window. The part of the selection is highlighted in green. Click and drag it in the 3D window to move it. Simulate to let the cloth strip. Drag the paints to move it in the 3D window and make the tip of the fabric closer to the other buckle. Use the internal polygon line tool to create the internal line. Right-click using the Edit Pattern tool and select Cut. Freeze the other patterns by right-click and freeze. For now, I'll only work on this piece. Select the bottom edge line, right-click and choose Offset as internal line. Change the distance to 13 mm with 4 offsets. Go to the toolbar for the 3D window, choose Fold Arrangement tool, and click on the internal lines and fold them by dragging on the arrows. Place it around the bar of the buckle. 
I will also copy and paste this pattern and move it to the bottom of the buckle. Simulate and let it drip. Right click on the last internal lines and choose Cut and Sew. Using the Segment Sewing tool and sew the edge of the loop together. Simulate, then click on the loop patterns. Gradually decrease the shrinkage warp. After the loop is closed against the bar, gradually increase the shrinkage width. Use the Edit Pattern tool to select all the internal lines and delete them. This will get rid of the folding and make the loop smoother. I'll freeze the loop part to protect them and work on connecting the top two pieces. Delete the bottom piece because we don't need it. Unfreeze the top fabric and move it closer to the bottom fabric at the cut. We are going to merge the two pieces. Gradually increase the shrinkage weft back to 100%. Use Edit Pattern tool to select two edges, right-click and choose Merge. Before simulation, use the Select Mesh Box tool to select on the threaded part. Right-click on the selection in the 3D window and choose Freeze. This will apply partial freeze only on the selected part. Simulate and let it drip. Right-click on the freeze part and choose Delete All Freeze. Select the pattern and change the shrinkage back to 100 and simulate again. Pull on the cloth to make it tighter. Since there's a lot of jittering where the fabric threads through the buckle, I'll turn the skin offset for this buckle to zero and there won't be any skin offset. I advise that only turn off skin offset after the threading is done to avoid collision issues while working. The pins I created earlier were deleted after cutting the pattern. I will apply it back using the pin box tool. Simulate and drag on the pin to make it even tighter. For the bottom piece, I will also decrease the shrinkage web to 80 to temporarily make it thinner. Using the internal polygon line tool, Create the internal line somewhere near the middle. Use the Fold Arrangement tool to fold it over. Place it around the D-ring. Use Edit Pattern tool to shorten both sides of the pattern. Use the Pin Box tool to create a row of pins at the internal line by double-clicking. By doing this, we can easily move the fold near the D-ring by moving the pin while simulating. Select the internal line using the Edit Pattern tool. Right-click and choose Offset as internal line. Set the distance to 5 with 1 offset. I will repeat this process and add a 5mm offset to the other side by clicking the Reverse Direction checkbox. Use Segment Sewing tool and sew these two internal lines together. Simulate and remove the pins. Gradually increase the shrinkage weft back to 100%. Adjusting the cloth in the 3D window at each step. Use Segment Sewing tool and sew the bottom pattern and the loop together. Here, we'll stitch down the excess webbing, similar to how it's done in real life. Use Edit Pattern tool to shorten the excess material. Use shortcut Shift-Z to display the length in the 2D window. Marvelous Designer will display the length of a line, separate by each segment point. To add the segment point where the internal line meets the pattern outline, right-click and choose Extend Trim and Add Point to Pattern Outline. Now, we get a distance of 17.3.
Select the top internal line, right click and choose offset as internal line. Input the distance of 17.3 with one offset. Remember to uncheck reverse direction. Use the internal rectangle tool to create an internal rectangle. Then use the internal polygon line tool to make a cross. Double click at the endpoint to finish the line. Select the internal shapes, copy it over to the bottom. After you have copied over the internal shapes, sew them together. It may be easier to sew them together in the 3D window using the segment sewing tool since the direction is reversed. Simulate to see the result. Select all pattern pieces using shortcut Ctrl A. Decrease the particle distance to 2 to add more details. Unfreeze all pattern pieces and simulate again. Increase the add thickness rendering to 1, so the rendering thickness is 1 mm. Switch the display mode to thick textured surface to see the result. The rendering thickness won't calculate for collision, but gave thickness to the mesh. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, hit the like button below and subscribe for more. If you have any questions about getting started in Marvelous Designer or this lesson, Please leave a comment below, and we will do our best to answer your question. If you want more information on Marvelous Designer, check out our website, form, and official Discord channel in the link below.